good morning students i think you might have studied the previous portion yesterday's portion the importance of accounting it was a long answer you might have learned that one all the importance now we are going to learn the basic accounting terminologies yesterday itself i told you that we are uh, having many terms many terms i have explained already even then we have i am going to explain once again all the terms what is given in this book okay the basic accounting terminologies the terms what are the important terms by listening this terms you will understand accounting what is accounting okay so listen carefully here nothing to learn study by heart but you should keep this in mind forever as an accounting accounting student you should know this one very well okay i will explain one by one first transactions what is a transaction it is an activity activities all the activities of a business concern that involves money or money's worth money or money's worth because when we purchase something there is a transaction what activity is going on we purchase the we purchase some goods that we can say that money is worth we are purchasing the goods or when we go in a bus what we we never uh, get your good thing from the bus but what we get we get your service we can transport from one place to another that service they are providing or you are coming to learn in the school and you pay money so what you get knowledge or we can say in common ideas or we go to a doctor we get the service or your consultant uh, how to construct your building there we get some ideas but but we pay something for them so that is called money sewer so we are transferring some money or money sewer that activity is called a transaction so transaction you have to remember that it is an activity that involves we that we transfer some money we give money and that person may give us another product or they provide some service or they give some ideas so what is the transaction transaction is an activity that involves the transfer of money transfer of money or money's worth from one person to another that is called a transaction one person is giving money the other person is giving a product or rendering service or providing some ideas okay that is transaction second one here this transaction we, uh, we should learn this transaction are divided into two either cash transaction or credit transaction we know if we pay cash or receive cash that transaction is called cash transaction that means immediate cash payment when we involve this activity soon after that activity if we pay cash or receive cash at the time of the activity that is called a cash transaction so in short we can say immediate cash payment or cash received takes place at that transaction is called cash transaction understood cash may be paid or received immediately soon after the activity 
at the same time immediate payment or receipt will be done in a transaction then that transaction is called cash transaction so we go to your uh, go to the market to buy fish what we do we pay the cash and we receive the fish that is called the cash transaction understood then next one credit to transaction just opposite of cash transaction here that cash payment or receipt is not done immediately but it will be paid later or in future paid or received cash will be paid or received not immediately during the transaction but in a, on a future date later on a future date if the payment or receipt is taking place then that transaction is called credit transaction understood for example we pay uh, now the school fees if we are not able to pay fully what we say we will pay on a future date that we can say that is a credit transaction we do not pay the cash immediately understand now now related to this transaction only these two cash transaction and credit transaction next it down account you know what is an account so that is the fundamental unit basic unit in accounting basic unit in accounting because for example we say you know, even in our day to day life we use uh, we will close his account isn't it to uh, denote a person or a business school account we used to say school account or his account Yeah, uh, when we go to a bank, that we know, isn't it? Our bank account, the savings bank account. So that is the basic unit in accounting. What account is the basic unit for measurement in accounting? We can open this account for a person or business or business asset, separate expense. You will learn all these. accounts in future in the third lesson then income etc for all these things we will start a separate account each separate account and uh, in in this accounting we can say this account is a summary of transaction because when we open a customer's account we can see we can see all the transactions that take place under the name of that person so we can say in account accountancy that accounting account is a summary of transactions under a head so if we open a open an account in the name of a customer all the transactions we can see what and all he has purchased how much he has paid how much account how much uh, uh, goods he has returned to us and what is the closing balance so we can see the whole thing under that head so it is a summary of transactions that is account the next term capital what is capital capital i have told you already capital is the amount invested by the proprietor in his business in the beginning to start any business we need to introduce some amount in the business that is called capital the amount invested by the owner or the proprietor proprietor is also you 
invested. Understand? Owner or proprietor. The amount invested by an owner or proprietor of an organization is called the capital. So in the beginning, so if we invest 10 lakhs to start a new business, to purchase some land and to to, buy, to construct a building, then to purchase the goods that we have to sell in the market. So we need a large amount to invest. That amount is called capital. That amount will be invested or introduced by the owner. Uh, that owner is also known as proprietor. That is why that it is called capital. Okay. That meaning is it is the amount invested by the owner or proprietor in an organization. That is called capital. The next one is drawings. Just opposite of drawings. What is capital? He is investing some amount in the business. Here, what is drawings? From the business, he can withdraw some amount. He may withdraw. Withdraw means he can take for personal use. He is running a business and all of a sudden, he need uh, to take some money to pay the fees of his child. So, what he will do? He may withdraw some because it is his amount. Okay. So, he is withdrawing some amount from his business for his personal use, for his child's studies. So, that amount is called drawings. Understood? The amount which is withdrawn from the business for his personal use is called drawings. Then, voucher. Voucher is a written or printed document in support of any transaction. For example, we go to buy some cloth from a textile shop. After purchasing, what we will get? We will pay the amount, isn't it? So, as an evidence, we will get one printed document, one bill. Isn't it? Not bill. We have to call it as the cash receipt. The, all these are the examples. Understand? Cash receipt. Or it is, when we pay some cash, no, if you pay fees in the school, you will get a cash receipt. Then if you go to the shop and buy goods, you will get cash memo. That is called cash memo. Then, you may get invoice. If you purchase on credit, we will get one document that is called invoice. Or when you go to bank to deposit money, we will take one slip to pay to deposit amount in the bank. One small, one long piece will be available. There, one small, short document also will be there. The long one, we will fill it up and we will give to the cashier. He will tear that part and he will keep this as his record. The small receipt, he will give it us back. This is called bank pay in slip. Just we go to the bank and we will ask that deposit slip, isn't it? That slip is called pay in slip. So all these are the written or printed document as an evidence that is called voucher understood a, a written or printed document in support of a business transaction that we get is called a voucher that voucher may be either it may be cash received for each transaction we will get one one voucher if we pay cash we will get a cash receipt and if we pay, we pay cash and we get some things that is called cash memo. If we purchase something on credit, we will get invoice. If we deposit money in the bank, we will get bank pay in sleep. All this will be considered as voucher. So it is an evidence for a transaction. It may be a written document or printed document.
Understood? Now we will see the next one. Eighth one, goods. What is called goods in business? Goods we can say may be the things or articles or commodities. The name, isn't it? Things or articles or commodities. All these are called as goods. When it is called as goods, if they deal with these goods, when a business is dealing with some things or articles or commodities, that is called goods. For example, a textile shop will purchase textiles from various mills or maybe the wholesale shops they may purchase. Why they purchase this one? For dealing. They will buy and sell. They will buy from wholesale market and they will sell in a retail. So both are happening. Buying and selling takes place with these goods. For example, you should understand another thing. If they purchase a furniture, furniture they purchase or they are purchasing office equipment, this we are not called as goods. Why? Because they are not dealing with, they are buying, not buying and selling. They only purchase and they use them. Understand? So they will not come under this goods. But all the things that they purchase for their dealing, they are buying and selling in order to sell. All the goods that they purchase are called goods. Here, we cannot say, but here this furniture, a furniture shop, what they will do? If it is a furniture shop, they may purchase furniture and they sell for them, it is goods. Understood? So, all the things or articles or commodities that they are dealing in a business is called goods. Then the next one, purchases. It's also li little related to this goods. Okay, the ninth one. What are called purchases? When we buy goods, buying and purchasing same meaning, isn't it? Buying goods with the intention of resale. Why they are purchasing? For selling. When they purchase goods, in order to sell, those goods are called purchases. Or in other words, buying goods with the intention of resale is called purchases. Understood? Here we cannot say the purchases when the that uh, one one business house it is buying some furniture for its use it will not come under purchases that is an asset part understand so yeah, all the goods that they purchase in order to sell them for the customers that goods are alone that buying is called purchases then related to purchases purchase returns purchase returns we may return some of the purchases this purchase returns are also called returns outward because we are returning this one to the suppliers it is going out that is why it is called returns outward a purchase returns understood what is this one so when goods bought goods bought are returned we have already bought some goods that we realize that goods are not up to our expectation not up to the standard or it is damaged what we will do we will return those goods to the supplier that is called purchase returns or returns outward so so when goods bought are returned to the suppliers they are called 
purchase returns or returns outward. Understood? Then next one, opposite to purchases, sales. What are sales? Now, what we have purchased, isn't it? Buying goods for with the intention of resale. So, that goods, that goods are called goods meant for resale. The goods that we have bought for resale. Goods meant for resale are sold. Now, we are selling them. That, that selling is called sales. When goods meant for resale are sold, they are called sales. Because we have purchased some goods, now we are selling these goods, purchased goods, that is called sales. If you sell one furniture that is damaged, that will not come under sales. Because we did not buy that furniture for resale, that we have bought for using in the business. So, one that sales means the goods meant for resale are sold, it is called sales. Now we will learn sales returns or returns in words. Now we have sold goods. Now that goods may be returned by the customers because we sold them to whom they are called the customers. Those who buy our product. That term is not given that we should know. All the people, those who purchase goods from us are called customers. That you may know. That is um, that uh, common term that we use, customers, isn't it? So, when the customers return the goods that they have bought from us due to some reason that I told you, maybe damaged goods or the, that goods are not up to their expectation or up to their standard, they may not like to use that goods that they, they may return those goods so that returning of goods by the customers is called sales returns or returns in word because it comes in then the next one is stock this is also related to purchase sales stock we have purchased some goods for resale purpose and we are keeping in the business house we have sold some of them the remaining goods is called stock. That means what? The unsold goods. The unsold goods lying in the business one particular date that is called what? Stock. Understood? The goods that are not sold and that they remain in our business house on a particular date is called stock. Then the next one, income. Income means we when we sell some goods, what we receive, we receive some amount, isn't it? So we receive some amount, that one, or some other earnings, amount received on sales. Or some other earnings, if we give some amount as investment we will receive what interest from that or if we hire a building for rent we will receive rent like that we may receive some income or if we de deal with uh, some activity we may receive some commission for doing some service or if we have uh, invested some amount in the company in shares we will get some amount that is called the dividend. So all these are the earnings and the amount that we uh, receive on sale of our commodities altogether it is called income. Understood? All the amount receivable on sales and the other earnings from interest, rent, commission, dividend then any discount, all these are called income. Understood? Then the next term is 
expense. What are all expense? So all the amount incurred we have spent, isn't it? That we call as incur. You carrying glass, we say. Amount incurred in order to produce or sell the goods. We have to spend a lot of amount to produce some goods. Or in order to sell the goods, we have to do packing or we have to take that one to the market. We have to spend some amount. All these are called expenses. The amount incurred by a business concern in order to produce or sell goods, that amount is called expense. Understood? Then the next one is solvency. Solvency also I think I have explained to you. Solvency position. It is the position of the enterprise, whether it is able to pay the debts, that is called solvency. Position of the business, whether it is able or capacity of the business also we can say, capability of the person or business to pay the debts. Debts means all the loan we can say. All the sundry creditors, we, when we purchase on credit, we have to pay them. All these are called the debts. Whether it is capable to pay the debts, that position is called solvency position. Understood? Whether a business or a person is able to pay the debts that he has or that business has, that is called solvency. Then, insolvency opposite of solvency. If a person or a business is not capable, not able to pay the debts or its obligations, that is called insolvency. When a person or a business is not able to pay the business debts or his debts, that is called insolvency position. Now, asset. What is an asset? We know we have heard, isn't it? That we can say simply, asset means, ordinary word is property. You will understand. You think that asset means property. Or the thing, what is the explanation of this asset or property? The thing that we possess or we own. A thing that we, that a business owns. Or we can say a yeah, right. For example, thing you may understand, no, land that we own. That is called a property. That is an asset. Otherwise, a building, we, are, we own a building. So we can say that is our property, that is an asset. What is a right? For example, if you write your book, or if you have invented something, as a scientist or anyone, something you have invented. So, we will be getting one right that is called the copyright. For the book, it is called copyright. For inventing something that is called patent right. So, the, if you have that right, that is also called as an asset, that we cannot see that asset. But this asset that we own, things we can see them. But this rights we cannot see. Maybe a goodwill of the company. We can say our own school example. Bethlehem. It has got a good name, isn't it? That is called goodwill. It has also some value. Understand? Because for years they have earned that name. Good name. That is called goodwill. Because of many years they have worked hard and they have got a name that is called goodwill. So that is also a right of the owner. So that is also called as a, an asset. Understood now what is an asset? Now the opposite of asset is called liability that we will see. 
liability next to one what is a liability opposite of an asset that means we have one financial obligation financial obligation of a business is called liability obligation means responsibility we need to pay some amount that is called obligation if we have borrowed a loan that is a liability or the capital itself is a liability for the business to repay it to the owner so that is called liability understood then the next one is debtor who is a debtor the customers credit customers if we sell some goods on credit to our customers they are called the debtors that means they receive a benefit but when they make the payment on a future date in short they are the credit customers they are called the debtors then opposite of debtor creditor creditor we receive a benefit but that payment takes place on a future date here we can say the credit suppliers we get the goods from the suppliers but we we are receiving the goods but the payment takes place on a future date so they are called the creditors so who are the creditors the credit suppliers then the next one depreciation depreciation of assets only in the building so we today we are constructing a new building after 10 years we cannot receive the full amount that we have invested in that building isn't it so there is a reduction in the value of the asset reduction in the value of asset is called depreciation it is due to various reason maybe due to usage because we use we purchase a car and we use isn't it or passage of time after some years even if we use or do not use we cannot get the full value that is called depreciation the last one given is bad debt bad debt related to debtors we sell goods credit on credit to the our customers we cannot expect the full amount from the customers some customers may not be able to pay so that it is a loss bad debt is a loss when the customers is not able to pay or we can say when the full amount of the debtors is not received that reduction in the value of debtors is called the bad debt so we can say it is a, an irrecoverable debt sometimes a customer may die he may not have any other person to receive that amount so that amount is an irrecoverable debt that is called a bad debt very bad we cannot receive it back okay that is irrecoverable debt so today i have explained 23 terms you read them clearly one of our students have sent a message that page number is differing i think you can explain to me which the edition you have first edition or second edition then i will come to know i have the second edition in second edition it is in page number 8 and 9 you read this understand this very useful for you to know the uh, to understand accountancy clearly in future so read it and understand it if you have any doubt you ask me okay students thank you very much